everybody welcome back to my channel i'm so glad that you're here today i'm really excited for this new study that i wanted to do is rapture dreams biblical and we're about to find out right now that yes they are and so what i did today was i chose a really great rapture dream that many people have seen this video it's about two hours long and it's from ken peter's rapture dream and you can find it at the prophecy channel and so i'm gonna get straight into this dream maybe you know about this dream i wrote down all the key points and the scripture verses to go with it to show that the rapture is very biblical and everything in this dream was exactly what was foretold that Jesus told us about. So I'm excited. Let's get into this. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to read his dream and we're going to go through the scriptures together. So in the beginning, his dream starts off with, oh, let me tell you a little bit about Ken Peters first. So basically when he was young, when he was a young man, he was a Catholic. And so when he had this rapture dream, he had no idea about the real Bible and about Jesus and how to be saved. He didn't know about being born again or anything like that. So when he received this dream, it was actually a dream about the rapture and he didn't know anything. And so that's what makes this dream so much more special because everything that was in this dream was exactly biblical. And he even gets saved in this dream, which is so crazy. So... It starts out with his dream. He says, it starts with a loud noise, a car horn, and it lasted, it was very piercing and it lasted for a really long period of time. And this was exactly like the trumpet call that Jesus tells us about. And so is this biblical? Is the first thing that we hear a rapture? Is it a horn? Is it a sound? Is it a trumpet noise? Is it a loud noise from coming from the sky? Well, yes, of course it is. We have some verses here in Matthew 24. It says, And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. And in Matthew 25, and at midnight, there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom comes. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And the last trump, it's talking about the last sound that a trumpet makes. So... Yes, it's biblical. We are going to hear the trumpet sound for when Jesus comes to gather us to him. Let's continue. He did not have knowledge of time or how long it been in between each different scenario lasted, but was in chronological order. So in his dream, everything is happening in order. He just doesn't have a sense of time. He doesn't know how long in between each scenario that he experienced he doesn't know if it was a couple of weeks days or even months so he was up in heaven looking down on earth the globe he saw the graves break open violently and people come out of the graves the dead people resurrected out not all graves were opened only the dead in christ so only select graves were opening up and these people started to come out so is this biblical people coming out of their graves? Yes. First Thessalonians chapter 4, 16 through 17. We have here. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So yes, the dead in Christ do get resurrected before the unbelievers and, and all the rest of the 
of the people. And we also go with the dead in Christ after they are raised. All right, so they came out with glimmering robes brighter than the sun, men with masculine robes, and women with feminine robes. That is so cool. Old people looked young again, but still mature. Young looked young, but were still mature looking. So people were coming out of their graves and they were looking old and then, but they weren't old. Like they looked, like you could tell that they had lived a long life on the earth, but they looked young again, you know, maybe in their like 20s or 30s, you know. And the young, you knew that they were young, but yet they weren't young anymore. It's like we're given that new knowledge. So is this biblical? Are we given these beautiful robes when we are resurrected? Yes, Revelation chapter 19, 7 through 9. Let us be re glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he says unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. So yes, we are given white robes when the dead in Christ are resurrected. And those who are alive and remain are also going to be given those white robes. So yes, and yet again, that is biblical. So after resurrecting, they disappeared. He didn't know where they went, but we know that they went to be with Jesus. So that's what the Bible tells us. All right. So in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 through 17, we will meet the Lord in the air. We've already read that. And Matthew 25, the virgins go into the door to be with Jesus and the door is shut. So we know that, yes, when the dead in Christ are raised, they are gone up to be with Jesus and us who are also alive, who are in Christ Jesus at that time. All right. So the next part, he did not see those who were alive get taken. It wasn't shown in the dream. But the dream actually reveals itself when we keep reading. We see that there were no righteous Christians that were left and that there were only those who were not right with the Lord. All right, so let's continue. After this mass hysteria hit the world and chaos with all the people, lawlessness and fear everywhere, as in the days of Noah. So before the rapture, there was no chaos. There was no hysteria. So is that biblical for there to be just a normal day? Yes, of course. In Luke chapter 17, let's go to it. <laughs> I love this study so much. It was just so much fun. All right. Verse 26. And as it was in the days of Noah, so it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. So, yes, in that day when the rapture happens, there will be no chaos going on. The normal will just be wars, rumors of wars, the pestilences, things like that, things that are always going on. But we are still able to be married, to get married. We're able to eat and drink. We're able to be around our family and just have a good time and be able to fellowship with each other. And so there is no mass pandemonium and chaos before the rapture of the church. All right, so let's keep going. He says, TV, television, electronics were all shut down for about two weeks. During this hysteria, many people were asking, where did all these people go? What happened? All these people saw this event around the globe. Every person he saw had a great look of despair on their faces and hopelessness. 
After two weeks, the internet, TV, electricity came back online and was playing recordings of people talking about establishing a new government and leadership. A man would be emerging to lead everyone. He spoke with great eloquence and charisma. He was soothing and promised answers to all current issues. He was smooth and extremely convincing, able to solve nearly all problems. Well, this sounds exactly like that man of lawlessness, the Antichrist. So is this biblical? Does the Antichrist show up on the scene after the rapture of the church? So let's go to the book of Daniel, chapter 11. The book of Daniel also talks about the Antichrist. And it gives us a good description right here in verse 21. This starts talking about the Antichrist. And it says, And in his estate shall stand up a vile person, to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. So this is exactly what the Bible says when the Antichrist comes in. He comes in peaceably. He has all the answers. And he wins the kingdom over by flatteries. All right. So he explained this removal of people was God's judgment. This is the, the, the man of lawlessness, the Antichrist. He's explaining this removal of people was God's judgment upon them. He constantly spoke of world order and peace, new order, world order, new times. So will the Antichrist be alive during the time of our departure? Is he going to be alive? Is he going to be behind the scenes? Well, yes, the Antichrist is going to be alive. He is going to be behind the scenes. He can be revealed to us before our departure, but it doesn't mean that we are going to go through the things that he is going to implement after the rapture happens, because it sounds like he's going to be alive. As it says here, it says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now you know that withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So when we are taken out of the way, when we are raptured up, the Antichrist is going to be alive. We could already see him and know that it was him before because he only gets three and a half years to do his work. So when we are take caught up with the dead in Christ to be saved from the wrath and the great tribulation, we are always going through tribulation, normal tribulation, you know, throughout our lives. But we are not there for the trial that's going to befall the whole world for those who were not right with God and who need something to get them to wake up. And so, and this is what is going to happen. So, yes, it is biblical that the Antichrist is going to be alive and we could, he could be revealed and we will know who he is before we depart. But that doesn't mean that we are going to go through what he actually ends up implementing. And that is where the scripture tells us is going to happen as well. All right. So... Ken went into depression thinking of the end of the world. Everyone around the globe was experiencing this. After walking for some period of time, he met this elderly man who appeared to be friendly. He looked like he might have some hope and know what was going on. Ken asked him, do you know what's going on in the world right now? Do you know what's happening? Do you have any idea? The old man said, the end was coming upon us and that 
He had not prepared for the times of the Lord, and he was very sad and said he had not been right with the Lord, and then told him God's plan for salvation. So is this biblical? Are there going to be believers who are left on earth after the rapture happens? Well, yes. In Matthew 24, verses 48 through 51, it says, But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delays his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looks not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So yes, it is biblical that believe there are going to be believers that are left behind. It is going to be those who were not right with the Lord. They turned back to drunkenness and doing worldly things and being consumed into the world. And they stopped watching. They stopped waiting for the Lord. They said, oh, he's delaying his coming. So we're going to go ahead and just go back to, you know, eating and getting drunk and partying and, you know, doing drugs and whatever else, you know. So we also have the same scenario for the 10 virgins. It tells us in chapter Matthew chapter 25 that the 10 virgins and we have five that get left behind. And the reason why they get left behind is because Jesus says, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. So the reason why the five foolish virgins get left behind in the rapture is because Jesus didn't know them. So that's for another video. I'm going to make a video on that. All right. So he pulled a little Bible out. This old man that hadn't been right with the Lord. He was left behind, but he knew exactly what was going to happen. He knew exactly what was going to take place. He had a little Bible with him that he was hiding in his pocket. And he starts telling Ken, and he starts showing him the scriptures in the word of God about asking Jesus to be his Lord and Savior. Because in this dream, when he had it, he was a Catholic. He had no idea about any of this. So the old man had a following of people who also received the gospel and gave their lives to Christ. And this is so cool because this is exactly what happened in my left behind dream. The very first rapture dream that I ever got from the Lord. I was left behind and I knew exactly what was going to happen. <laughs> and I knew what I needed to do. And I started preaching the gospel to everybody that was around me. I just started saying the rapture happened and Jesus came and took his people. And I was telling them that they needed to turn to God. They needed to believe the gospel. And this is exactly what Ken dreamed, received his dream from the Lord. The same thing is happening in his dream where those who are left behind, the foolish who stopped waiting, who stopped watching, who started turning to the world, they ended up getting left behind. But they knew exactly what they needed to do. All right, so we have some scriptures to show the what goes on during the Great Tribulation and these believers that are left behind and what they end up doing. So in Daniel chapter 11, let's go there. Daniel chapter 11 again. All right, Daniel chapter 11, verses 31 through 35. This is talking about what happens during the Antichrist and with the implementation of the mark of the beast. So it says, And the army shall stand on his part for the Antichrist, for that man of lawlessness, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength and shall take away the daily fat sacrifice, which is Jesus, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate, which is the mark of the beast. Once you've taken that mark, you are desolate. You are no longer able to be saved. Don't never take the mark of the beast. 
Okay, so, and such as do wickedly against the covenant. So those who do wickedly against the covenant of Christ, shall he corrupt by flatteries. So those who are not keeping the commandments of Jesus, those who live wickedly against God's covenant, they know the truth, but they don't live in repentance. They are, in this sense, it's saying that they are gonna get corrupted and by flatteries. So they're gonna listen to the Antichrist and they're gonna be convinced because they weren't strong in their faith. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. So the people that have believed, there's people that get left behind, there's believers, they just weren't right with the Lord, but they knew exactly everything that said in the book of Revelations. They knew what needed to happen. They knew the mark of the beast was gonna happen. They knew that they just needed to bring people to Christ and that in the end that we were gonna have to die for the Lord in this case. So you're gonna have the weak Christians that are gonna end up falling and then you have those who are going to turn around and wake up after the rapture happens and they are going to become very strong Christians in this end time great tribulation and they are going to do exploits against the Antichrist and they shall under and they that understand among the people shall instruct many. So those who understand, those Christians who knew exactly what's going to go on, it's exactly like in my left behind dream. I knew exactly what was going to go down. I understood everything, and I started instructing people. I started telling people. So this is why I just, I was just blown away. I'm so happy to do this study with you guys. All right, so. It says, and they shall understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity and by spoil many days. Okay, so we know this is going to happen. The tribulation is going to be very hard. People are going to be getting their heads chopped off by the sword. People are going to be probably getting shot with gunshots and things like that. They're definitely going to go into captivity. And so it says... Now when they shall fall, they shall be helping with a little help, but many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And some of them, understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end. So those who understand, those who get left behind in the rapture, they're going to do exploits. They are going to bring people to Christ. They are going to be given help by the Lord for them to continue through and unto death be faithful. And so this is very biblical with the old man in Ken's dream who starts preaching the gospel and then he starts having getting people saved and they start following him and so they're in this big group of people. And there's it's it says um Ken continues with his dream. He says, also babies from infancy up to 18 months were being abandoned and he did not see any other children. So the children of a certain age up to a certain age from 18 months up to a certain age, there were no kids. So the kids went with the Lord. And those who were left in the tribulation were still having, were still getting pregnant and were still having babies. And they were just being left. Babies were just being left behind. So is that biblical? Are there going to be children in the tribulation? Yes, there is. And if we read in Matthew, I have a couple scriptures here. Isaiah chapter 13 verse 16 this is talking about this is talking about the burden of babylon which isaiah did see so isaiah saw the destruction of babylon and what was going on and it says their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes their houses their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished 
So the children are of a certain age, the babies, those in the tribulation are going to be born and they're going to end up not being taken into the rapture because they will have still been in the womb at the time. So these are children that have been born um, because you have three and a half years that the great tribulation is for. And so there are going to be people that are having children and great tribulation in his dream. His wife also becomes a believer, which is cool. The man that could do signs and wonders, the lawless, the man of antichrist looked very handsome with chiseled facial features. He was too perfect in appearance. God provided all right, so the man of lawlessness apparently is going to be very handsome. Of course, it would be the opposite. You know, this world is all about pride and the looks of the flesh on the outside. If you're six foot tall and have a certain build with muscles and and just very, I don't know, intelligent and masculine looking and you wear a nice suit, people just think that they give you more respect and... We know that Jesus didn't come that way. He came humble. He came, you know, wearing rags. And he just came in such a different state than how the Antichrist is going to come. Because that is what those Jews are looking for, which is their real Messiah. So, God provided for the small group of people he was with who converted and believed in Jesus. Food multiplied and people were healed. So in this time, it's amazing because God will still provide for those who end up repenting and turning to him and getting right with him during this tribulation time. And so I feel like this is amazing because you get to see again that the food multiplies and people get healed. And what a beautiful thing. So... Let's continue here. It says cash would carry bands in them to track the cash. So long ago when Ken was given this dream, we had we did not have those $100 bills that have the strip going down the middle. And now we do. So this is crazy, right? How he had this dream. How, how would we know that we were going to have money that was going to have a strip down the middle that was going to allow people to be able to track it? All right. So... He went to the bank to get money and a great earthquake happened. A great glass building fell and killed about 200 people. It was worldwide earthquake. Millions of lives were lost. Okay. He went to the bank to get money and a great earthquake happened. A great glass building fell and killed about 200 people. It was worldwide earthquake. Millions of lives were lost. And he said that the earth was just moving around like, like it was drunk or something. So is this biblical? Is there going to be a worldwide earthquake? Is the earth going to wobble around like a drunkard? Well, let's look. Isaiah chapter 24, 19 through 20. So this is talking about the Lord making the earth empty and making it waste and turning it upside down and scattering the, abroad the inhabitants thereof. So this is another end times prophecy. And when we go farther in, it says the earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean, dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and that the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. So yes, this is once again biblical. The earth is going to shake and quake, and it's going to move about like a drunkard. It's exactly what it says in the Bible. So Ken continues on with his dream, and it says, The weather changed from the earthquake. The most fertile areas were destroyed with drought and famine. Military police riding in black Hummer vehicles, wearing ball caps or blue helmets. Inside, they had computers with digital D GPS. Can you imagine, you know, a digital GPS? We did not have that at all in his time. So, and this is around, I believe this was around the 1980s-ish that he had this dream. So... 
He says streetlights had hot dog shaped cameras that knew the whereabouts of everyone's vehicles. That's so crazy. You could not cross state lines without papers. Doesn't it feel like we're about to get there right now? We already, we can't even go anywhere right now, can we? Because of this whole coronavirus thing. So the man on TV continued to have all the answers and talked about world peace, global peace. He saw Christians who used to have a relationship with Jesus, but had become cold in their faith and had fell away from their interests in a life of holy, passionate pursuit of God. This is, once again, very biblical. Christians are going to be left in the great tribulation and for many reasons really it's because of living in their sins and not repenting to god and keeping that relationship with christ so for a short period of time people were coming to jesus in total surrender he was then able to see above the globe and light brilliant rays of light shooting up it was the beams of light shooting up into the atmosphere when he was brought closer it was mass revival hitting the earth Normal people of God were all over the globe. They were praying for sick people. They were being healed instantly. Blind people were seeing again. Dead people would resurrect. They prayed for the lost to come in and people came. So is this biblical? Are people going to be given powers? Is there anyone in the Great Tribulation that is going to be given power to do great signs and wonders and healings and gifts Yes. Let's go to Revelations chapter 11. It says in verse 3 through 7, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. So, yes, it is very biblical. People who are in the tribulation especially these two witnesses. I know we have some who think, who are the two witnesses? Are they going to actually be parts of the church that are left behind? This is a possibility, or it could actually be just two people. I think both have good arguments, but we don't have to decide that here in this video. We just know that it's biblical. There are going to be people on earth who are chosen, God's two witnesses, whether it means that it's many, two different types of witnesses, or it's just two. They are given power in the direct tribulation during the time of the Antichrist, and they are going to do great wonders. All right, so regions were being totally one for Jesus Christ. It was almost like everyone was like Jesus walking around doing these works. Some regions in total light and others total darkness. The world order began to be very angry because what was happening was beyond their control or ability to manipulate it and stop it from happening. He began to see persecution on unprecedented scales. The outpouring of blessing and outpouring of persecution began to ramp up and people were being taken into penitentiaries all over the United States, especially in California. Many prisons that became detention centers for Christians. Well, we see that right now. We see all the FEMA camps and all that stuff. We know it's for us. We know what they're trying to do. And this kind of stuff, we weren't really seeing that back in the 1980s. This kind of just started popping up recently within the last 20 years, you know. We started realizing, hey, something's going on here, you know. So he met up with a man to make a business transaction with, and the man asked him if he had gotten his identification mark. They just enacted a new ID mark. It was voluntary in the beginning, but soon everyone would have to have one to conduct business. 
The ID mark went in your right hand. The man was very excited that he wouldn't have to use cards anymore. Doesn't that just annoy you about the people when you tell them about the mark of the beast and they're like, that sounds awesome. I'm going to get that. I love having that convenience. I don't have to use money anymore. I can just use my card. Boop, boop, boop. I'm going to use my Apple Watch, you know. It's so scary. I just, I tell my family all the time, you know, it's, don't take the mark. And they keep making fun of me saying that they would like to have something like that. So, all right, Mark of the Beast. We know this is biblical. Revelation chapter 13, 16, and 17. I will read it just in case for anybody who doesn't know. So, it says, And he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So, yes, the mark of the beast is biblical. We know that very much. Something inside of Ken, coming from his stomach, said to him, Get out of here as fast as you can. He began to say, Oh my goodness, it's the end of the world. It's really the end. So, Revelations chapter 13 came to his mind as he ran to his house. And the next scripture that came to his mind was Matthew 24, the abominable desolation, and don't run back to your house. Is this biblical? Let's go in and look at Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17. Let's get to it. All right, verse 31 through 36. It says, In that day, he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him not likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding together. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two men shall be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. So, yes, this is very biblical. People... Do not run back to your house. Those of you who are saying to go hide in your house and stock up food, you are not going to be wanting to be at your house in the Great Tribulation. Okay, because they have the GPS, they're going to want to track you. You do not want to go back to your house. You don't even want to be in your house. You're probably going to throw your phone into the water somewhere so that they can't track you. So, all right, let's continue. This devil demonic presence was inside his house at his front door. So when he got to his house, there was this demonic presence there. Dark and black shadowy figure. It was really creepy looking. He screamed and woke up from his dream. So he says he felt a strong urging to find and read a Bible. Remember, he's a Catholic. He doesn't have a normal Bible. So when he woke up from this dream, he felt like he needed to go and get this Bible. And so he does, and he began to read Revelation and then fell back asleep. So the dream continued where it left off. He woke up from the dream and felt led to go get a Bible. And magically, he found one in his house randomly. He doesn't even know how it got there. And... He flips all the way to the back and starts reading Revelations, and then he ends up falling back asleep, and boom, the dream starts off right where it left off. How crazy is that? There was no way for him to get out of this dream. He kept saying that he couldn't control the dream. He couldn't do anything in the dream. It just was playing out. He could not do anything. He couldn't even wake himself up from this dream. The dream continued where it left off with the dark demonic figure. He began to run away from his house. He got caught by a military police truck and they knew his name. They took him to a government building and his wife was there. Also, the old man that he had met that wasn't right with the Lord that was bringing people in was also there. All right, so 
They were captured and taken to a room. They began to politely interrogate them to be cooperative, come into agreement with their new government and everything will be fine. His wife began to preach and told the old man and, and the old man to preach against them and their new government. So they took hold on them and put them through a mind control interrogation, but they fought it with scripture. This is where your scripture is gonna come in handy. So we need to make sure that we are reading our word and we got that downloaded into our brain because we're gonna need that, especially for any of us who are end up falling away or becoming lukewarm before the Christ return where we say, oh, he's taken too long. And you know, we gotta, we gotta stay ready. We gotta make sure that we are staying in Christ at all times and not becoming complacent. So all the nations of the world were as one. Continents were divided into regions instead of countries. It started to become obvious who were God's people and who were not just walking down the street. Wow. I wonder if that would be because of the mark of the beast. I wonder if people would look different. So after fighting the mind control and interrogation, they were brought to a long hallway with thousands of people lined up. People would begin asking them to renounce their faith as they stood in the line. They never mentioned the name Jesus. Every once in a while, someone would crack and renounce their faith and get dragged away. This is huge. This is exactly what it talks about in the book of Daniel in chapter 11, where it talks about how those who were living wickedly with the covenant, those who were trying to be a Christian, they were trying to be stay that believer, and they were just getting picked off like flies. They were they were giving in to that really good talk to them for them to renounce Jesus. Don't ever renounce Jesus. If you deny Christ, you are not going to go to heaven. That is for a fact. Okay, so Revelations chapter 2, 8 through 10. Let's go there really quick. It says, this talks about the some of the believers that are going to be tried in like interrogation. They're going to be tried. This is biblical. In Revelations chapter 2, it says, The church of Smyrna, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Fear none of those things which you shall suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death, and that would be your soul dying. So this is very biblical. Rapture dream. Interrogated. Could have been 10 days. He doesn't know how long. He wasn't really given how long things lasted. So it could be, this could have been 10 days. We don't know. So... After coming to the end of the line, they were in a type of holding cell. The old man went through the doors and disappeared. His wife was next. And when the doors opened, he saw a large man standing with a huge sword and they strapped her down and beheaded her. And right before they did that, she started preaching against them. They asked her one more time if she wanted to renounce her faith and she did not, she was not going to. And so this really large man who had a sword ended up beheading her. Ken's turn was next. He was so afraid his spirit spoke in that moment. And he said, I'm afraid Jesus, please help me, save me. After this, a hand gripped his shoulder and a peace and warmth came over him. He turned to look and it was Jesus standing behind him. 
Jesus looked into him, into his eyes, and knew everything about him. And Jesus said, Fear not, my son, for death will never hold you. And the courage flowed over him. The persecutors asked him one more time to renounce his faith, and he said, No, I can't. He is Lord of all, and he should be your Lord. As soon as the sword came down and touched his neck, he was gone and felt no death whatsoever. He was in the spirit, holding Jesus' hand, looking down at his body. He was now delivered and in the presence of the Lord forever. And this is where his dream ended. What did you guys think about this dream? How cool is this? And everything in it was biblical. And I really love how this dream was so spot on. And it really connected with my Left Behind dream because I was... I was doing the same thing that old man was doing when I got left behind in my dream. And I asked the Lord when I had this left behind dream if I was going to be actually be left behind. And so the Lord gave me a dream. I asked like, Lord, can you just give me something where you're taking my hand and taking me up to <laughs> into the rapture? And he did give me another dream where I was standing in this black doorway. I reached my hand up, he grabbed it. I s screamed Jesus' name and Jesus came down and took my hand and he pulled me up and started carrying me. And so I know I'm not gonna be left behind, but I also have to make sure that I don't become complacent and I don't stop watching. So what did you guys think? This rapture happened before the second coming of Christ because the saints follow Jesus from heaven. So we know that the rapture happens before the wrath. We're not appointed to wrath. And we know that the second coming of Jesus Christ, he's coming back after the wrath of God, after those vials and stuff are poured out. Jesus comes after that and we come with him from heaven. So this was really awesome. And so yes, rapture dreams are biblical and this amazing, Amazing Rapture Dream from Ken Peters is biblical and we just read so many scriptures to prove this. So I had so much fun and I pray that you guys have a blessed day and I look forward to seeing you again and I don't know what my next video is going to be but I'll have something for tomorrow as well and so i pray that you guys all have a blessed day in the lord jesus and i will see you guys in the next video bye